All right. Well, welcome to um, the 27th meeting. Wow. Of the um, the RAP group, the uh, Wildfire Risk Reduction and Asset Protection Working Group. Um, you probably all know I'm Amy Bach and um, just so pleased that to be with all of you um, and to welcome the two guest speakers that we have today. You can see the agenda on the screen. Um, but before we get to that, um, I wanted to just give a quick hit of a recent update and then um, and then uh, give you a little bit of information and then we will turn it over to um, Jill and Carleone. Um, so the last week, the Nevada Insurance Commissioner had a panel um, discussion uh, because her state uh, legislature enacted legislation that it, it's a, it does it requires insurers to voluntarily um, offer mitigation discounts, which doesn't make total sense. But anyway, so the department has um, they, they didn't want to prescribe a specific dollar discounts. Um, so they have said to insurers, uh, you, it's voluntary, um, but here are the ranges that we expect. And what the department um, has done as a as a carrot is to say that if the if an insurer um, voluntarily offers a discount, they will fast track their rate increase application. Um, so that that's that happened. And on the panel with me was. Um, somebody from the California uh, Trade Association of Insurers who was were expressed a concern that California consumers are thinking that now that our department has promulgated the regulations, that that means that people are going to get start getting their discounts immediately and that he was worrying about that because that in a lot of cases is not true. A lot of, you know, there's a process where the insurers are now going to be um, they have a certain amount of time to file updated rating plans um, with the discounts. Um, so uh, I that was a point he made that I thought was worth sharing. Um, again, there's nothing that pre prevents insurers from, from offering those incentives now, um, but if they wanna go through the department and do it um, in that formal way, then they, they have um, some time to do it. So that was one. Um, and then the other, the other thing I wanted to, um, share is that uh, UP has a team that we have hired um, a dynamic duo to set up the RAP Resource Center, which is um, what what is part of what's coming out of all this collaboration that we've all been doing, um, which is going to be a new section of our website where um, a user can come on and, and um, navigate around and find out uh, what re resources are available in, in a given community, for um, individual risk reduction, and then also what are um, funding opportunities, and then uh, also what kind of wide these are going on. And I think um, those of you who have been going the distance here with us know that um, that the both the insurers um, and also the Department of Insurance here in California um, are are um, I think they're trying to get their minds around what constitutes community wide uh, mitigation um what you know what what activities rise to the level of saying this community qualifies um for a break on their insurance rates because or people who live in this community qualify so um you know the regulations in california do talk about the different um features that make a community um qualify as being active in, in promoting at a community level mitigation and fire having a you know being a firewise community having fire safe councils um, but with I think we're also going to be advocating or United policyholders is advocating that things like having a shaded fuel break project underway should qualify a community having um, a bond measure having funding that's um, in place having an ember stomp we you know all those different activities. So in that vein, um, I want to introduce the two members of the dynamic duo that we have hired to set up um, the RAP Resource Center. They're not going to take a lot of time because we have two presenters today, um, but I wanted to briefly introduce, um, and Emily, I don't know if you can pin Chris um, and then Samantha. So Chris Chow, 
um, and Samantha Orient are um, the two folks that we have. Um, there's Chris, there he is. So Chris, if you want to just give us a very quick hit on, on who you are and then, um, and then let folks know if they have information that they want to make sure is included in the resource center, what, how they would reach you. You bet, Amy. Thank you. Um, again, my name's Chris Scow. I'm, uh, here in Gardnerville of all things. I just moved here from, uh, from the Bay area. I retired a few years ago. I was a deputy director for fire and aviation. Uh, for the Pacific region of the Forest Service, so Region 5 of the Forest Service. I'd had a, about a 38-year career in fire, uh, going back to being a hot shot and a smoke jumper and stuff like that back in the day. Um, and in retirement, I've been doing a little consulting, uh, connect with Amy at a wedding in Petaluma, of all things. Um, my daughter was a bridesmaid. I think Eloise is your niece or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we, we were sent across the table and bored the whole dinner party with uh, talking about the fire situation <laughs> in California for hours. Um, and as we talked, uh, this project came up on the resource center. Um, and it's, it's something I'm, I'm glad to engage in having uh, fun doing it. We're, we're going through all the counties um, we needed somebody a little bit better at technology than me, which is just about everybody. Um, and I, so I've got a great partner that I've worked with on a lot of other projects named Samantha Orient. And I'll turn it over to her, Amy, to introduce herself. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll put my email in the chat. Would that work? Perfect. I'll put my email in the chat. Um, if you have something, uh, we're, we're kind of going county by county. Um, if you have something that you think would fit into Amy's description, please send it to me. We're, we're hitting all the fire safe councils, et cetera, but I'll, I'll put my, my email in the chat there. Uh, Samantha, Jan? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep. Oh, right, there I'm, you I'm, are, wow. I'm out in the wilds of Idaho. Um, so my name is Samantha Orient. I live in McCall, Idaho. I had, gosh, about uh, coming out of high school, I started in, in fire with the Bureau of Land Management switched over to the Forest Service. I uh, worked in uh, the dispatch center on the Payette National Forest and left a few years ago to, um, to help out with some of the risk management Forest Service projects. So I've been doing that, um, uh, including working on the Marshall Fire Facilitated Learning Analysis. And so it's been, it's been great to be able to travel around and see what uh, different areas of, of the country are dealing with, um, with, issues with um, insurance for areas that have been hit by fire and, and areas that are expected to be hit by fire. So I'm really excited to be working on this project. And as Chris alluded to, I'm, I'm the tech nerd. <laughs> um, so I'll be handling um, building the website section and trying to get that um, to be really easy for users to use and um, be able to just jump in and be able to pull those resources. Great. Well, thank you so much, Samantha and Chris. Um, one of these days I'll pronounce your name right. Okay, so um, the, uh, and Chris, uh, his email address, as you'll, you'll see, is already in the chat. And, you know, the Resource Center is going to be uh, hopefully helpful to all of you. I know some of you have your own websites and you've been putting time into thinking about how to make the graphics and the and the interface um, intuitive for people. But the bottom line is we're all pulling in the same direction. We're all rowing um, toward um, giving insurers the confidence to come back into these markets, giving insurers the confidence to give people a break um, when and, and reward them and, um, and really um, keeping everybody moving forward to doing everything we can to protect um, communities, uh, prevent mega fires um, and, um, and adapt to the new normal. So with no further ado, we have two um, speakers today that are right out there on the cutting edge, um, leading efforts in their communities to um, assist individuals and then at the community level. Um, we have Jill Santos, who's the executive director of the Ventura Fire Safe Council is gonna go first. Um, and so Jill, if you want to um, share your screen, and get started. We are so happy to hear from you today. You guys are um, have been way out front, I think, for quite some time, um, thanks in part to the Thomas Fire and other events. 
Thank you, Matt. Um, I am just getting set up. Can y'all see my slides? Yeah. Okay, great. And y'all can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. And I always forget, you guys can still see me too, right? Yes, there you are with the red shirt. <laughs> Okay, so I can't, I can't be making any funny faces. All right. No, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yes, um, uh, I am with the Ventura Regional Fire Safe Council. Um, Ventura, for those of you who don't know, Ventura County is probably smack dab, almost halfway between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. Um, and many cases, we fall into this weird borderline um, county where sometimes we fall into Southern California and sometimes we fall into Central California, but we have, as much as I really wish, we, do, we don't really fall into Northern California. So um, I'll kind of give you a little bit of context of what the landscape is down here. Um, my presentation is relatively short, so um, I left a lot of time uh, for discussion if that's, what, if that's um, how, the, how everybody wants to go. So um, our uh, small nonprofit, um, the Ventura Regional Fire Safe Council, it was originally established as the Central Ventura uh, Fire Safe Council. They changed their name within the last year or so. I've only been on board as the executive director since June of this year. So um, relatively uh, a intense six month period getting um, brought up to speed. I do have a background uh, just you know to share with the group. Um, you know, I'm originally from the East Coast. My original uh, degree was in like wild wildlands recreation and public lands management from West Virginia University. Um, I lived and worked in the Tahoe Basin for um, about a decade doing a variety of community-based um, work around um, almost all the issues that hit the Tahoe Basin, mostly water quality. Um, and we actually did a, a lot of projects. I collaborated on a lot of projects with some of the fire districts. We used to run these programs. This was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. We'd call them Tahoe Forest Stewardship Days. And we would go out and do chipping events and um, trying to, to, to work to make the basin safer. I moved down to uh, Southern California in about 2007, um, then quickly uh, had a child and now, now he's 14. Can't believe it. Now he's 14. And um, I've worked for local cities and nonprofits. And um, my background is in a mix of a lot of different aspects of environmental preservation. Just, you know, um, I've worked in edible food recovery, food waste reduction, recycling, storm water, water conservation, uh, you name it. Um, uh, so I've worked for the juris local jurisdictions down here, uh, City of Santa Barbara, Ventura, and the City of Oxnard, as well as the County of Ventura. I've also worked for nonprofit organizations like food recovery organizations. And this is my first gig as an executive director. So it's been a great um, opportunity as well as a huge learning curve. Um, but we focus on action, engagement, and collaboration. That's really where the heart of our all of our programs lie. And our, obviously our vision is to create a fire resilient community, help create a fire resilient community um, where folks are adapted to live with wildfire rather than fear it. Um, that's sort of where we're hoping to go. We um, are also part of a wildfire collaborative, which is also in its nascent stages. And it's a partnership with the Ventura County Fire Department, which we're a contract city. So um, uh, we don't really have Cal Fire like other communities do. Um, we're also partnering with the Ventura County Resource Conservation District and all the other fire safe councils. We have two um, established fire safe councils in Ventura County. Um, one that's a little bit older is the Ojai uh, Valley Fire Safe Council. They've been around a, a smidge longer than Ventura's. And uh, Ventura was started by a volunteer group in about 2009. Um, they incorporated in 2010, but they didn't start really getting funding uh, for staff positions until about 2020. And then in the end of 2021, early 2022, um, they went from a staff of like two and a half um, FTEs to eight <laughs> in a matter of months, right? And, and then the executive director retired and then they hired a new executive director. So the organization has been really, um, kind of evolving rather quickly um, over the last six months. And it's been exciting to see the amount of growth um, that has been achieved in a short period of time. But I've heard this analogy used a million times and I, and I love it. It's, it's, it's like we're flying the plane and building it at the same time. And while that's exciting, it can also be a little um, nerve wracking. 
Um, we do have a history of fire in our county. So, and I think the one that most people are aware of is the Thomas fire that happened um, there right around this time of year, uh, it, at Christmas time um, in 2017-18. Um, and at the time, it was the largest fire in California history. It was one of the fastest moving fires at the time. And then quickly, it was surpassed by so many others, as we've heard again and again, story over story across the state. Um, I think what I would say we're experiencing here after the you know five years post Thomas fire is we still have about 40, about almost half, about 42, 42% of the folks who had been um, who lost their structure, lost their homes in the Thomas Fire still have not been able to fully move back in. And there's a variety of reasons for that. But, you know, that's, I think that's a, some of the um, issues that our community is facing is, is it's the one thing of having the event um, and that emergency response, but then the recovery, um, how are we creating systems that allow our community to maybe recover maybe a little bit quicker um, and with a little bit better plan for be more resilient in the future. So I'm going to sort of break down these three areas, collaboration, action, and engagement. And um, so our account, our organization was um, received funding to update our community wildfire protection plan. So the last time that it had been updated was in 2010 and the Ojai Valley Fire Safe Council um, had done that update, that the original CWPP. So um, we've actually had a, a hiccup in, in the in this project so we're actually in the process of releasing an rfp to help us finish the countywide cwpp we've also drafted um, several local plans and that's been our um, sort of uh, the way that we've been doing the cwpps is really a, kind of trying to balance between the a localized plan and and the larger countywide plan and making sure that they're um, consistent with each other and they're cohesive. Um, but I will say that collaboration uh, with all those partners um, has been great, but also collaboration, as we all say, uh, collaboration is messy and it gets really hard. Um, so you know, moving projects forward in a fast paced environment where you are building the plane <laughs> as you're flying it. Um, and when people traditionally have been in silos and we're waking up after COVID, it's just, it's been an interesting, um, it's been an interesting run to try to really see this project um, through to the finish line. Um, and we can talk a little bit more if people have questions about that, but I, I don't wanna, you know, that's the CWPP in and of itself. There's so many uh, ways that can, um, communities can go with it, whether just getting it done, you know, at the, at the lowest standard of the bar raise, or are we looking at something like I'm seeing so many more sophisticated plans and how much, um, if they're gonna, you know, if they're a living document, how much does an agency or organization put into the effort of producing one and then having to revise those? So we're struggling with a lot of those things. And, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm sharing this because I think that maybe other fire safe councils may be experiencing similar, similar challenges. Um, Action. So action is a real big part of us, uh, of, of the work that we're doing here in the county. And, and I will, I want to give a shout out to Ojai uh, Valley because they've got amazing plans underway. Um, and they kind of, and, and what I like to see about Ojai Valley is the way that their projects are really looking at that landscape scale. Um, and I think that that's something that we've partic we've particularly struggled with at the re at the other part of the county. Um, so we've been focusing more of kind of like chipper days. But I would say our sweet sauce is the home hardening program that we worked really hard to develop a program, and we're in the process of of improving that program. We've received some funding and bringing in our emerging fire safe councils. So we have um, you know Bell Canyon, Ventu Park, and Oak Park. None of them have established you know their their nonprofit status, but they are all in that that nascent stage of, of developing their boards and, and getting those initial capacity funding grants. And so what we've been really working on is trying to figure out a way to standardize home hardening in our county because, you know, what's happening here, and I don't know if it's the same in other regions, but you know, there's a, a variety of people who offer these home hardening kind of assessments and home hardening services. Some of them are retired you know, uh, firefighting personnel, some of them um, are other agencies and organizations that are recognizing this opportunistic moment to come into the fire world. And then there's us and there's the fire district. And then there's, you know, there's all of these entities, um, RCDs creating different 
methodologies to use. And so where we've been really focusing our efforts is trying to figure out what's going on with RAP and like, where is, you know, where is it going in terms of, you know, the Office of Insurance and what programs are they looking at? And it really does, we're, we're, we're really landing on, um, on FireWise as sort of our North Star and other aspects. And we can get into a little bit more detail as I move forward in the presentation, but the home hardening program in and of itself, we've got two interesting pilot projects uh, in the works right now now that um, make the home hardening program more than just the assessment. So, you know, it is the idea of going out and providing that assessment and providing those recommendations. We're actually working with Fire Aside, um, which is a, um, a field-based app, a tool that can be used to conduct both chipper events and home hardening assessments. Um, and, you know, and we're working to try to get um, that pilot that down here. It's a really expensive program to get it, but I do feel like um, it is gonna be a game changer for us when it comes to providing um, a really easy to use um, report for the homeowner to make those decisions about when they're gonna engage with their insurance company. Um, and then having that ability for them to track and update and uh, of, of the work that they're, they're doing. The two pilot projects that we're working on is one specifically in our Thousand Oaks area with a partner called Costa Conejo Valley Open Space Authority. And we're specifically looking at a subsidy program for um, you know, homebound seniors. So I don't know, again, if this is consistent across the state, but in, in particularly in our region, we have a lot of house rich, cash poor kind of um, scenarios going on where um, maybe somebody has done a certain level of work, or if this is even in the case of the Thomas fire um, impacted families, you know, they get to the point where the build is done to a certain point, but it's just right now with inflation and the economy, Economy, it's nearly impossible to get those final um, you know, few thousand dollar um, activities done. So we've been working with them on developing a subsidy program for seniors so that we can actually work with a um, uh, work with a, a, you know, a chipper crew and actually provide that work for the seniors uh, at a grant basis. And we're developing all of those aspects uh, more than we thought it was going to take, you know, just in terms of how do we do the application process and how do we screen the folks and how do we outreach and all of those things. And then the other pilot project that we're also working on is uh, a partnership with the Ventura County Community Foundation. And we're looking at Thomas Fire impacted uh, residents and seeing um, what kind of rebate style program, uh, developing some sort of a, a rebate style program. And, and we're looking at different models, but all of that folded into it is also the workforce development piece. Because the first question that happens when we do provide an assessment is someone's going to say, well, how do I get the work done? And so we haven't had that piece put into our county yet. Like we haven't figured out that piece, you know, is it reaching out to the contractors association? Is it, you know, handymen, painters, um, you know, window uh, contractors? What, who, who is the first, the, the, who is the contractor? What kind of contractors out there going to do the work and how do we ensure that the residents that we're working with are, you know, getting um, quality service and, and that those contractors actually know what they're supposed to be doing. So I think that's going to be um, something you'll see coming out of us in the next maybe year or so. And then engagement is a big piece. Um, obviously, you know, educational events, um, participating in groups like this that are doing advocacy um, around some of this work. You know, there's a, a whole host of issues that come with equity, you know, around either, you know, in the cost of, you know, and in homeowners insurance, the cost of doing the work, just if you think about it, I mean, I, I'm, you know, here I am, I'm a single working mom, I can't even imagine how, what, what does it take to get a home hardening assessment to come to the priority of your to do list in this really crazy busy world. And so, I also wanted to just sort of share openly that we, we struggle to get the engagement. You know, we're, we're talking about a free service that could potentially save your property, right, from total destruction. And for whatever reason, we're not getting through the 24-hour news cycle and sort of the, the general post-COVID apathy that I think is um, so prevalent around us. So those are the things that we're really trying to work on and trying to improve and trying to develop and obviously trying to build as we are flying this plane. Um, oh, and I was supposed to go into detail uh, each one of these slides. So now we just get to skip through these lovely slides. <laughs> um, might talk a little bit about, let me just look at my notes real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, so 
I think the big thing to point here is uh, collaboration um, by establishing a partnership with all of our fire safe councils in the county and working through what we're calling the Ventura County Wildfire Collaborative. I think that we're setting ourselves up to be able to participate in some of these larger statewide or regional initiatives. Um, and partnerships take a lot of time, um, they take a lot of effort. So really building um, time into our, our meeting, you know, in, in every time we have a meeting or the, the way that we're engaging with our partnerships and really trying to ensure that we're infusing a little bit of what I call JEDI, which is, you know, justice, equality, diversity, inclusion. Um, how are we making sure that we're right, you know, we're talking with the right people in the room, bringing them together, um, working together. These educational events and advocacy, um, they, again, they take a lot of effort to put on. We've been having a really good response from the public coming to town halls. And I don't know why, but town halls seem to be the thing. If we say it's a, a workshop or, um, or something else, we're not getting as much um, response from the community. So town halls seem to be like working for us and we have a plan. Um, our first one is actually coming up on December 15th in the Simi Valley Moore Park area. Um, and then we'll be hosting town halls in every one of our um, communities as we move forward into 2023. And we also did receive some funding and I'm on the planning committee. Um, we will be hosting, a, um, we're hoping it's a very large regional co conference in 20, at the end of 2023 in October. So try to put a little, save the date in your, um, in your calendar to remember. Hopefully we'll, you know, we'll be able to convene a, a lot of uh, wildfire professionals down here in um, fall of 2023. And fuels management, chipper days, home hardening. Um, so we're working, we, we did just receive some, some great funding. So we're gonna be starting up our chipper day program again. Uh, again, this falls into, I, I like to marry this with um, workforce development. Cause I, again, that is like the, the hardest part is once we say, okay, we've got the go ahead to do um, the work, whether it's tree trimming, you know, hazard palm tree, trimming removal, uh, brush work, it's who is available to do the work and, um, and what's the cost, you know, and is that going to fit into our grant funds and things like that. So um, it, it, we've been working on all of these partnerships and we do have a very strong relationship with our um, local county fire uh, uh, and they they do a lot of work with us and there's also a nonprofit that we partner with called the crew um, that's up in, based out of Ojai that also provides some um, assistance to our, our chipper events and they're actually partnering with us specifically on that senior subsidy program. So some thoughts, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we are experiencing down here. And so these are some thoughts, uh, competition versus collaboration. You know, we talk about getting people out of silos. Um, I, and I've heard this at other workshops um, and other folks have mentioned it, but just by nature of how the funding is coming for a lot of these grant programs, I think it almost forces sometimes some regions to be a little bit more competitive and less collaborative. And I heard at the at one of these wildfire resource task force meetings that I was at in September, I, they, they mentioned these three words over and over again, I guess it's technically four words, landscape scale, alignment, and urgency. And so I'm hoping that in the coming year, uh, now that I've got some ground under my feet, that we might be able to, like Ojai is doing, starting to look at more larger uh, landscape scale programs and how we're aligning um, our priority projects with um, sort of the values that are coming out of the, the funding, funding agencies. And, but just to say that by nature, I think the way that funding is coming currently, it still keeps us in a little bit of a competitive stance, um, which is unfortunate. Um, public apathy post COVID, um, I just wanted to throw this in there because it's a, it's a real thing. Um, we've got you know inflation happening. All the, if you kind of mix it in with geopolitical, all of this sort of dread that we hear if you listen to the news. Um, and, and on top of just this fast paced environment, I think one thing that we're struggling with is getting that engagement. Um, and I just think it is a, it's a product of people are just overwhelmed and, and a little bit checked out. Um, so figuring out that way to kind of do the hook to, to get uh, folks to catch and just read for three seconds, whatever it is that we're trying to get them to understand. 
and then vernacular does not mean victory. Um, I, I hear this so much now, and you know, I, I, I've worked and studied in environmental work um, for nearly three decades, and I, you know, in the in the '90s, it was all about sustainable yields and you know, environmental resource conservation, and then. We got into the 2000s where we were talking a lot about smart development, sustainable development. And now you, we use this word resiliency. And I, I guess I just wanted to throw it out there. Just by changing the word, it doesn't necessarily mean that we've done anything differently. And um, a resilient community is the same thing as a community that is sustainable. But what is it that we're actually doing um, behind the language and behind the context and behind the conversations? I think it's really important that we figure out how to um, engage our community at this level of balance. And it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Um, if somebody, if, you know, if residents are just so uh, either, you know, like I said, house, house rich, cash poor, or um, maybe there's language barriers or something, the, you know, um, physical limitations, whatever it is, the call to action isn't necessarily getting, cutting through um, sort of the, the mystery of everything that needs to be done. Um, this also leads to inclusivity versus individual. I mean, at some level, we're really, our, our, our marketing and everything comes down to focusing on trying to get that individual homeowner to do the, um, to do the work, to do the home hardening efforts on their, on their parcel. Um, how exclusive is that if we're targeting you know, homeowners versus you know, a community and we're trying to be inclusive of everyone, but is that watering down our message, right? These are just, I know these are sort of like waxing philosophical thoughts, but I was hoping that we might, maybe other, other regions are experiencing something similar um, and we could have a sort of a conversation about it. And then the last thing is this idea of intelligent design. I read a book a, a few months ago, it was called uh, Recapture the Rapture. Jamie Wheel, I'm not going to say his name right, the last name, but he talks about um, when we're doing this kind of work, um, creating things that are open source or DIY. And so I think that where we're going with our home hardening is we're recognizing that, you know, for a county of nearly, nearly a million, we have like 900,000 folks, um, depending on where the new maps land, uh, you know, a significant Pop portion of our population is in or is in a at risk zone, a high fire or a, a moderate fire zone, a high fire zone. So, what is it that can be done that is making um, some of this home hardening efforts more open source or more DIY? How can it be scalable and replicable? I think that's another question we should be asking ourselves. If something's working, you know, how do we scale it up? To, um, how do we replicate it in another region? And again, that's why I love these advocacy groups because that's what I'm, I'm seeing this, you know, robust of, well, this didn't work in our region, but you could try this. And there's a lot of, um, in this wildfire world, I will say there's a lot of really uh, great um, camaraderie and, and resource sharing and networking going on, which I think is helping us build that plane as we're, as we're flying it. And then the last piece is he talked about antifragility, which is just basically, again, using that word resiliency. So how do we build programs um, that survive the, the boom and bust cycle of funding or um, that are able to withstand the distance that happens between the actual event and the long-term recovery that happens and where you end up with scratching your head going, well, what's next? And so those are some of the, the main questions that we are really grappling with down here. And um, so this is our staff and, um, we're here and we're available to, to collaborate and to network and to share information. And really that's, um, that's the majority of my presentation. And I just wanted to open it up for any kind of questions or comments or discussion at this point. Well, Jill, thank you so much. Um, you know, our one of our main purposes here in convening these is not just to to harvest good ideas and, um, but also to connect the people, you know, help connect people that are doing similar work in, in communities. And I think, you know, you're being candid about something that I think um, almost all, all of us share, which is that, um, you know, we've got this energy, we've got this enthusiasm, we've got this knowledge, we've got these tools, but not everybody has their ears open or can can hear or wants to hear and and that's just a reality so like i think the pragmatic like so i have a question two questions for you are you getting any take up 
um, and, and if you have questions for Jill, you can put them in the chat um, and I'll, I'll, I'll read them out loud or you can raise your hand. Um, are you getting, um, um, yeah, I mean, there's a therapeutic aspect to this too, right? <laughs> it's like, Jill, just, just, you know, just, just Priscilla, uh, you know, up in Sonoma says she's, you know, resonates with a lot of what you're saying. Um, IBHS program, wildfire prepared home. Um, are you, did they come visit with y'all? Did they, um, did their team, um, is there, are they actively trying to roll out the program in your area? So that's my first question. Not, nobody's reached, reached out to me to my knowledge. Okay. I will say that I have been struggling to keep ahead of everything in the last six months. Um, because, so from what I understand is that there's kind of two programs, the IBHS Fire Adapted Home, and then there's uh, Fire Wise. And so we've been sort of pushing towards Fire Wise because really, I don't know, other than we, I know that Firewise is on either side, like both in Santa Barbara County and Ventura and Los Angeles County, there's a lot more Firewise communities. So that's sort of where we've been going, but not to my knowledge. And I would think that if um, if this summit happens in the in the fall, I know that they're on our list to hopefully engage. So oh, not this fall, next fall. Yeah. So they, um, you know, they do have, um, they, 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 you know, we have, we have the three sets of standards. They have their standard. They, they've got this program. They've got um, an outreach. You know, I, I guess, you know, they've got outreach going. They have lined up inspectors. But, but you know, what we've talked in previous meeting, um, there's, there's the strict five foot. Um, no around the home, and that wasn't been identified as an obstacle. A lot of people, I think, fire wise, um, getting your community designated fire wise is def is you know, the reason we IBHS program and fire is both of um, are um, officially kind of recognized by the insurance. Froze. I think she froze. <clears throat> uh, I could jump in here really quickly, Jill. I mean, I don't know. I'm uh, Ryan Elliott, Topanga Canyon Fire Safe Council. Um, uh, I mean, I'll, you, you have to be unmuted, I guess. Um, but the Firewise thing, we just became a Firewise community. And Beth Burnham, who's also my co-president, is on this call, on the Zoom call. Um, it's something we did, and it was really useful. It was very useful for the community. It actually does turn it into discounts on insurance. So it's really worthwhile pursuing it. Um, I, would, I would just say that much. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I think it's a... I mean, I rarely say things are a silver bullet, but I think when you look at FireWise in combination with the Fireside app and, and just general what we're trying to um, do with workforce development, so the after fact, like after we give the recommendations, what happens, how do you get the work done? I think they all kind of marry really well together. So yeah, Matt, yeah, I'd, I'd like to know more about that app too. That sounds very interesting. Oh, I could, um, I think, Amy, you've had a present, presenter talk about Fireside, right? Haven't you? I think Amy has had a presenter talk about, maybe I'm wrong, maybe Fireside, I feel like, yeah, you had somebody from Marin talk about that. Um, right. I think she brought yeah, but I do want to add uh, something. This is Joel Loucher speaking from United Policyholders. And that is the, the Safer from Wildfires um, list of mitigation actions that was put together by the state agencies is the set that is embedded in the regulations for insurers to be obligated to recognize. So while they may, uh, and there's, uh, as Amy mentioned, there's a lot of overlap between all these lists of mitigations. So, you know, much of them are the same, but that specific set has to be specifically um, included in insurers rating plans and so Joel, if you do those things there'll be a certain discount although those are going to be 
few months down the line from most insurers because of the process. So of I'm so sorry to interrupt here um, with the technical difficulties. I'm so sorry that we are having trouble with our feed here, but I don't want to run out of time um, for Carleone's presentation. This is a great discussion um, and I hate to cut it off, um, but we only have 20 minutes left and I wanted to make sure we give her a chance to um, to do her thing. Um, and then um, if we have a little bit more time, we can we can get back to the conversation, um, which as always is really important. And, and, and thank you, um, Karen Collins um, with the um, Insurer Trade Association for um, for your info in the in the chat. So okay, so um, uh, Carleone, are you with us? Are you um, are you ready to go? I you am. Unmute? I'm ready to go. I am unmuted. Camera's awesome. on. All right. We so are going to share my screen now. Great. So I had asked. Um, great, and I had asked. Um, Carolyn, uh, a while back, uh, to to uh, present because, as I think a lot of you know, we start a lot of us started with looking at wildfire partners in Colorado and what do they what do they have that we don't have and why why isn't it here? And a lot of people said, oh, you got to talk to this woman, Carolyn Stafford. She's up there in Sonoma. Um, and she is pushing a county supported version, as it were. Um, and so I'm really, really happy to have you with us. Um, take it away. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. And thanks for this opportunity. I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, the programs that uh, Permit Sonoma um, has going in our wildfire reduction, wildfire redu uh, risk reduction programs, and kind of describe some of the stuff that we have rolling along. Uh, my name is Carolyn Safford. I uh, currently work for Permit Sonoma in the Fire Prevention Division, but I've been working simultaneously at the county um, and for the uh, Countywide Fire Safe Council, um, Fire Safe Sonoma for more than 20 years in this space, um, spanning decades of, oh, that doesn't happen here in Sonoma County to after 17. Boy, howdy, it does happen here, which has been an, a really amazing uh, progression as we've moved from a place that was uh, largely spared from large damaging wildfires to a county where we've had more than our fair share. So what it comes down to is this. To reduce uh, risk in our communities, we basically have two tools, right? We can work towards making homes and communities more resilient to wildfire ignition through defensible space and structure hardening. This is what we call the inside outside. And we can work towards reducing wildland fuels, thus wildfire intensity and spread into abutting communities. Um, in an ideal world, we should do both simultaneously. And this is the goal we've been working towards at Permit Sonoma. And I'll be describing some of the grant projects that we are, um, have in place that describe this progression. So the first one is the uh, SOCO ADAPTS or Wildfire Adapted Sonoma County project. This is part of a um, hazard mitigation grant program from um, hazard uh, from FEMA, which we wrote immediately after the 2017 wildfires. Um, wildfire adapted Sonoma County is a, it's their phased grants. There are actually two of them. I'm not going into gory detail, but um, phase one in these projects is where we're doing defensible space and um, assessments, structure hardening assessments. Um, environmental review and planning um, uh, in the areas which you can see on this map. Um, the purple areas are part of the first grant we wrote and the teal, which we're just getting started with now, are in our, our second grant um, program areas. In those areas, we do uh, defensible space assessments for everybody within the project boundaries. And um, we're offering opt-in structure hardening assessments um, call out to Ivan uh, O'Neill, who's in the audience today, who's um, contracting with us to do those structure hardening assessments. Um, so those are offered to um, people in those project areas. 
Um, phase two of these projects are incentive cost shares. Um, roughly, we'll be offering, and these could change depending on demand, um, roughly $3,700 um, for defensible space incentives and approximately $7,000 to implement top priority projects as identified in both the defensible space and the structure hardening assessments. There's a 25% um, property owner cost share in there, so we will pay for 75% um, of project costs up to those amounts. Um, we're just now moving into the very early phases of working with FEMA and Cal OES on the um, compliance to not only NEPA, these are federal dollars, but also CEQA, which I think is going to prove to be a very complicated part of the process. So stay tuned for further information. So this project is absolutely an inside out project. We are only looking at near home um, and on-home risks. Um, the next one I'm gonna talk about is the Sonoma County Hazardous Fuels Reduction Grant, which is another phased grant and another um, FEMA hazard mitigation grant. Unlike Wildfire Adapted, this is reducing risk um, on a mm, landscape level, on a wildlands landscape schedule to reduce risk of fires um, that approach communities. Um, this map here is showing in the crosshatch areas, these are the overall project area where we are in the very early stages of selecting projects to implement in these crosshatch areas. The other colorful bits on the map are wildfire history, which was a really important in part of why we selected the areas we selected for these. Um, the goal of this project overall is to reduce uh, wildfire risk to life and property, um, reduce wildfire risk to, um, to natural resources, and foster healthy landscapes that are more resilient to wildfire. Um, the, uh, the really um, big thing that we have on our horizon is this um, Wildfire Resilience, Sonoma County, Nature-Based Mitigation to Adapt in an Era of Mega Fire. I argued about the title of that grant. I think it's way too long. Um, <laughs> this um, was uh, a, a proposal we put into BRIC. Um, and uh, much to our surprise, in June of 2021, uh, this fellow, who you might all recognize, announced that this project had been accepted by FEMA, um, which was a huge surprise to us. And in fact, it was just accepted by FEMA last week. Uh, mm -hmm. We just got a special award for that. Um, the Wildfire Resilience Sonoma County project represents one of the only two wildfire resiliency grant projects that have been funded to date through the BRIC program uh, right. nationally, and we're, we're pretty excited about it. Um, what it does is that we're really trying to get that dual approach in uh, one, one chewing gum um, with this by doing both the outside in and the inside out simultaneously in three project areas across the county. And I'll show you a map in a minute. Um, so we're doing both the structure hardening and creating those um, uh, buffers in homes. Uh, the total award for this grant is uh, about 37 million with a 25% local cost share. Um, and um, the goal really is to um, use best available science to really help us plan for uh, how, how do we do this? How do we really get behind making entire communities resilient to wildfire? We've had a lot of large scale structure loss in Sonoma County. Um, that is a tough fight. How do we really make this happen on a community scale? So we're wanting to bring in the best available science from all over, from IBHS, from everywhere, to really help us make those uh, determinations about how do we do this. We'll be providing those structure hardening and defensible space assessments for all the um, properties in the project areas, and then providing um, incentives for implementation um, for near home and working on those uh, landscape scale vegetation management areas in the areas that surround our three project areas. Those project areas look like this. Um, sorry, these aren't very bright. Um, the yellow on the map represents the sort of wildlands um, strategies that we'll be undertaking with the blue areas being um, near home and defensible space. Um, 
these areas were chosen very much purposefully um, to represent extremely divergent social uh, built environment characteristics, uh, wildland fuels characteristics. Um, we're going from uh, what is um, many homes built in the 30s in the middle of the redwood forest over here in the west area to uh, the Larkfield Wikiup area, which was heavily impacted by a couple of fires in the last 10 years. So we've got rebuilt homes, we've got homes that survived the fires, we've got areas that haven't yet been impacted, um, a very dense uh, urban neighborhood. Um, and then down here, this is a largely uh, wildland, it's a, it's a grassland, so it's a very different ecosystem. And by representing these three very different areas, um, we're really hoping that those prescriptions and projects that we come up with for these three's area will become ac applicable to everything that everybody else is doing across the county to reduce risk. And of course, one of our goals with these three specific project areas is to really concentrate heavily on getting all of the work done in these areas, which is pretty similar to what the um, Safer from Wildfire programs and a lot of those are asking for. We've just uh, received a, um, approval for the very first part of the funding on this, which is roughly $7 million. And our, our kickoff meeting for this is literally this week. So this truly is um, a, a late breaking news project. Um, I know that we'll be hoping to build broad coalitions um, and extensive co uh, collaboration with a lot of folks like the people that are in this room. Um, so we'll look forward to working with you further as we move along. Um, my other little side hobby of late has been updating our uh, Sonoma County CWPP, which was originally written, full disclosure, by me for Fire Safe Sonoma in 2016. Um, whence it became almost immediately um, outdated because we had so many massive changes on the landscape um, due to fires. Uh, this has been a collaboration between Permit Sonoma, Fire Safe Sonoma, CAL FIRE, Digital Mapping Solutions, and a really broad host of other folks. Um, one of the things that we've done for that that I think is a really interesting tool is this wildfire risk index, which we've created. Um, what this provides is a um, very high level model that predicts relative wildfire uh, risk across the landscape. Um, it's a broad tool not included for or suitable for uh, parcel level analysis. Um, but the value of the WRI is that it can be used to draw an area around a community um, and then use the analysis in that area to suggest the need for and nature of mitigation measures that we can take to reduce risks um, to acceptable levels. Um, it's been uh, broadly used, folks seem to really like it out there in the community. Um, this is uh, the wildfire um, risk index and also our project entry portal, which we're currently working desperately on updating this hub site that you see represented here. Um, what we're wanting to use this um, project entry list for is to finally come up with a really broad map of what people are looking to do across the county so that we can make these planning decisions um, in a way that considers both the needs and desires of the community, as well as the needs and desires of the agencies who are doing work there. And so we're working up this um, GIS mapping platform where we can ask folks to enter that data so that we know where, who wants to do what. And all of these things are on our CWPP hub site. So 2017 through 2020, um, fires burned more than 300 acres in Sonoma County, destroyed nearly 7,000 structures and killed 24 people. Um, I'm pretty proud of the work that Permit Sonoma, Fire Safe Sonoma, and groups across the county have been making since that time um, to create projects that holistically address risk at the community and wildlife scales. And um, the projects that we have, which are represented on this map, um, are beginning, we're, we're beginning to, to get a, a large swath of the county represented with active funding. So we're pretty proud of that. We hope many of these projects are scalable and we'll be moving them um, down the road in the future. 
So we're doing the best that we um, in the county. And um, that's our, our core team makeup includes two divisions within Permit Sonoma, um, fire prevention, my boss, the county fire marshal, Steve Matrusik, and John Mack from Natural Resources. That is that. Well, thank you. Um, as, as Patricia said in the chat, very, very impressive. Um, really, really impressive and, and um, and the, the BRIC grant, wow, that's like a lot of money <laughs> to spend. Um, so I feel like I cut off a conversation. We had that, we had some technical difficulties here at um, UP headquarters. Um, and so uh, I wanna make sure people get a chance to ask questions, both of Carolina and also Jill. I had, there's one from Chris, can you please describe how permit Sonoma, but it's cut off. So Chris, you can unmute and ask your question out loud. Yeah. Um, hi. Yeah. And again, I, I um, echo everyone that would say how impressive Sonoma count, County's been in engaging all this. I, I've worked for Napa County during the 2020 fires in their OES branch. So I'm pretty familiar with the fires. When I was working on the RAP Resource Center uh, over the past several weeks, I, I was really focused on Sonoma County the last three or four days in, in pulling together everything. And it seems to me what, what I was typing there and got big thumbs was, could you describe how Permit Sonoma has approached county, county governance in, in wildfire areas and how you've kind of restructured and brought people under one roof? If I'm understanding it right, you, you've brought people in together to work together that normally would be in, in separate divisions of county government. It, it, is that accurate description of Permit Sonoma? Um, that is certainly one of the things that we're trying to do. And that siloing that you're describing is, uh, um, it's a huge issue. Um, uh, and, and hearkening back to Jill's talk too, of the, you know, it, it, it's really hard to get everybody on the same page. And there seems to be sort of a baseline, well, we wanna do this, but we wanna do this. So that is one of the things that we're trying to do. And um, one of the things that we're really hoping that we can help to do um, with the CWPP hub site and project entry and evaluation panels we'll be creating to really start looking at this more globally um, with input from folks from the natural resources side, the environmental side, the equity side, the fire side. Um, yeah, that is definitely something that needs to happen and one of the things that is a, a, a strong focus on, on, on what we're trying to do. And we're um, definitely trying to um, move that forward. Um, so Donald Bullard has a question. Who did the fire modeling for the wildfire risk modeling and why did you not include parcel level? Um, this grant that we used for the CWPP was the maximum award from our friends at, friends at FEMA. We also wrote that right after and we had $150,000 um, to create the countywide CWPP. So uh, that precluded uh, some of the uh, detailed analysis that we would have liked to have done. Um, the uh, risk index was based on the hazard index which was created by Mark Tuckman, who's awesome. Um, and then the uh, risk date, the risk indices that we used were added onto that hazard layer. So it's uh, Mark Tuckman of Tuckman Geospatial. And maybe we'll be able to add to those layers in the future. There are other also other, there's other, uh, there's a wildfire resilience planning tool, which is also um, under development in the county that I think is gonna go in and start providing more indices too. Um, yeah. So, um, and Carolyn, you're obviously very focused on open space and um, um, sort of large scale um, strategic work. Uh, are you also like Jill developing, uh, having to develop like needs-based standards for um, for grants to homeowners? Or are you not there? Well, actually, I am m myself personally um, often accused of not caring about large-scale landscape <laughs> because I'm <laughs> I'm 
very, very strongly focused on near home and defensible space and mm -hmm. structure hardening. That is, I believe, the secret sauce of um, where we need to start doing this work is near homes, because if we want homes to stop burning down, we need to get those homes hardened. So that is m m my primary focus and my interest. Um, I do not at all argue with the importance of that large scale okay. landscape work. Oh, and um, job well. That is done si largely well. um, si well. through, through our uh, natural resources division. Folks are more, more focused on that. So the um, the hazard reduction, the, the uh, fuels reduction, hazardous fuels reduction plan. That's being, I'm sorry, that's being handled more on the um, natural resources side than on my side. And I am <laughs> primarily interested in your home. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Patricia Cecil, you had your hand up. I want to recognize that. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Carly, I'm very impressive. Um, wow, I'm, I'm a green with envy. <laughs> uh, hope to be able to bring similar funding to Santa Cruz County. One thing I read recently was that uh, Oregon put together a, um, a fire risk map um, that I think they were intending to use at the parcel level and it kind of blew up in their face. And the Oregon Department of Forestry had to withdraw the map uh, because of the huge outrage, um, people saying you didn't you didn't do the assessment for my property correctly. I can't possibly have an ultra high you know fire risk at my location. So um, I don't know. I'm kind of interested to see how that um, shakes out in Oregon. But it, there may be a cautionary lesson there for us in having super detailed risk maps that we release to the public um, as if the detail parcel level detail is correct and accurate. Um, it may be better for us to use more blurry, um, larger scale maps. So interesting. Yeah, and that is those polygons that create this data, they're 100 acre polygons. So there's a, a lot of mm, uh, things that can change within a 100 acre polygon. So you could well have areas of very low risk within a pretty red dot. Um, and that is the point of the tool. It's for large level um, planning, not for parcel specific uh, data. And, uh, you know, one of the concerns is insurance companies, right, who um, was uh, the, the, in Oregon, they got in a lot of trouble because people assumed that the insurance companies were using this map to um, cancel their insurance, which uh, probably wasn't the case at all. Um, insurance companies use their own data, as most of you probably know. Right. <laughs> right. Well, we do know that Cal Fire is in the process of, um, of a similar kind of undertaking, and I'm sure um, they have been really, I don't know, Chase, and they're probably very nervous seeing what happened in, in Oregon, because as, as Carolyn said, it, it wasn't even necessarily accurate that the, that the, you know, that, that the, the insurance decision making was key to the mapping, but people thought it was, I mean, I, you know, I know the insurance commissioner was pretty shaken by his experience at a couple of public forums. So, well, we are at the two, um, 204 mark here. So um, as I, I, I had a feeling that we were not going to make it through all the questions for these two speakers, because um, both of you are um, pretty advanced in, in key areas of the state. So um, I just want to say thank you again to Joe and to Carolyn and, and really um, just assure everybody that um, you know, we want to, the, the goal here is to get um, people's questions answered, but we can't do it in, in an hour, but we keep these to an hour to keep people coming back um, and making sure that people will, will make the time um, at a hard hour. Um, there's a really good exchange here going on in the chat about fencing. Um, thank you, Ivan, for answering Joel's question. So we will be back um, January 10th. Um, and we will be hearing um, from Mark Brown with the uh, Marin um, 
wildfire protection agency, the district that got created along with the the um, ballot, the the uh, bond measure that we heard about from Bill Tyler, from Chief Tyler. So um, I don't know if there are other similar authorities like that, or whether that's the only one. Um, Carolyn, uh, you're you. I know you have a you have a district, but I don't know. You don't have an authority, right? You guys, you didn't do a bond measure in Sonoma to finance. No, okay. So you're it's this is all no. And the fire in Sonoma County, we have thirty fire agencies in the county. Right. So we're we're far we're far from that, and it's sort of a mm, part of the discussion that needs to be. To, yeah. All right. Well, so um, keep the great information coming, everybody. Uh, you know how to reach me and um, or Emily um, or Joel. We're all um, our first name at uphelp.org. So if you're bursting with a question you didn't get to ask, you can shoot it to us in an email. Um, if you have uh, already know that you have questions you want to ask um, Mark about the the um, about how they formed um, the district and, and how they did it. Um, you can shoot those to us and we'll make sure that that he seeds them in his presentation. Um, but I want to wish everybody a really happy holiday and a safe one and, um, you know, keep the inspiration going um, with with all the good work that you're all doing out there and um, and in, and I mean, it feels good to be among comrades here. So um, thank you all for showing up. And Jill, really, especially um, for your candor, um, you just sort of articulate what I think, articulated what I think a lot of people um, feel. So, um, so keep up the great work, everybody. We'll see you in January. And um, special thanks to Emily Rogan on my team um, and all of you for showing up. So um, be well, signing off. And Jill, Jill, I just popped my email in the chat for you.